Dr. Adigun had his Bachelor of Science in Mathematics at the Faculty of Science, University of Ibadan. And then from there, he went on to have his Master's of Science in Biostatistics at the Faculty of Clinical Science and Dentistry, University of Ibadan as well. After which, he proceeded to have his PhD in Epidemiology at the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute, uh, University of Basel, Switzerland. And uh, there, he had his thesis titled Geostatistical Model of Malaria and Associated Mobility Among Preschool Eight Children in Nigeria. And then, uh, Dr. Adegun has been a statistician with FOBLAM Health Research and Ma uh, Data Management Center in Ibadan. Uh, uh, that was between 20, 2001 to 2002, after which he uh, was a statistician in charge of World Health Organization sponsored multi center clinical trial at the Center for Research and Reproductive Health, Shagamu, Nigeria, between 20, 2002 and 2004. And then between 2006 and 2007, was an assistant lecturer at Nazareth State University, Kefi. And now from 2004 to date, he has been with the National Remote Sensing, Just Nigeria, where he's currently the Deputy Director of Research and Application Department. Dr. Adigon is equipped with a lot of, with uh, many skills that are useful for his work, ranging from that uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Access, Access GIS software like Quantum GIS, ArcGIS, image processing software like Ethers Image Imaging, uh, and uh, ILWRS, statistical software like SPSS, Stata, HAR, HAR Inla, and Wingboss uh, for Bayesian modeling, and as well a computing platform that he uses uh, Windows and Linux environments. Uh, Dr. Adigon, uh, being a, a Nigerian, and was fluent in uh, Yoruba and English, and then he has published a lot of work, among which uh, we have selected few, which are uh, parts of which are uh, estimating the population at risk with soil transmitted uh, elmetiasis and annual drug requirement for preventive chemotherapy in Ogun State. Uh, effect of road networks and human population density on the risk of dog bite incidents and rabies in Nigeria. Malaria risk in Nigeria, Bayesian geostatistical modeling of 2010 malaria indicator survey data. A study of relationship between land surface temperature and land use slash land cover characteristics using remote sensing and GIS techniques. The impact of knowledge, attitude, practice, and beliefs of hypertensive or hypertensives on drug compliance in Southwest. Reasons for non-compliance with antihypertensive medication in Southwest Nigeria. Target organ damage and associated clinical conditions among Nigeria with treated hypertension. And then chronic renal failure at Olabisi Onobando University Teaching Hospital, Shagamu, Nigeria. And many more that he has published. These are just selected few. Um, I want you to join me to welcome our facilitator, uh, an astute researcher who has come here to impact us with knowledge. This Three days, join me to welcome Dr. Abbas Olaji Adegun. The one there, all this with all this big, big tight, but I really thank God. Just like uh, Professor Bakari told me, that you can light the something and put it under pushing. 
So I really thank God for that. And very, I'm very sorry for how this thing has been delayed. Not that I really want it that way. Also many other things that come my way that I cannot also reject. That's the reason why. So. Just like the title of uh, something specified, special data what analysis and Bayesian model. When you mention special data analysis, I think uh, it's data that has what? Location. Apart from the attribute that you have, it also has location attribute. And in geography, they always mention something that the more closer something is, the more related they are. Is it not? That's the popular this man love. I think one particular geographer law. So that is the, apart from the attribute you have collected in the feed, that data also has the spatial attribute, like your longitude and latitude. And uh, this can really influence a lot in your analysis. So I quickly go to the, the our introduction. These are very sure these are things we know very well. In fact, I was feeling that this one does it really is it really needed. But I think we, there is nothing, there is no information that is too simple. I may be making very wrong assumptions. Because even after having my masters, I will still put through all these little, little things. So I think it will still be relevant. So let's quickly go to the first page. I'm just going to look at the classical statistics and the Bayesian statistical inference. You know, so majorly what we do in statistics is you want to learn something from your data. That's why it said, yeah, statistics is the science of learning from what? Data. You know, just like some people, when they, and that, why you call something science? That is something that is what? Based on what? Evidence. Not that just somebody will just tell you, oh, and the people in uh, Ifaki Ekiti, they will need more net for malaria. How? On what basis? On what basis? You can't just, you know, it's politician that, that will come around and say, hey, no, Ifaki, hey, because our governor is from Ifaki. We need to give them more net for malaria. No, that, that's not science. And that is why we need what? Statistics. We say statistics is what? Science of learning from data. Like if I want to, like uh, they usually conduct an uh, MIS, Malaria Information Survey, like every, f is it not every five, five years? I hope I'm right, Professor Bakari. Every five, five years. You can, in fact, that, because that data I use for my PhD, so um, uh, I know the way they, so. If you want, like uh, the reason why they want, they always conduct that survey is that they want to know what the what they want to know is that they want to know the privilege of malaria presently in the country. They want to know oh what is the prevalence in every and the and the way they do it that they divide the country into clusters and they will take data from this cluster and from that they'll be able to say oh this is the prevalence of malaria in this area. And that is what is statistic done. Science of learning from data. It concerns with collection, summarization, and analysis of data. And we have approach to this. You want to draw, you know, when you are doing when, when you are doing you, you, you can't collect data for your country. Is it not? Because it will be too what? Expensive. And it will it will be too even laborious going through so and you take some so that you can do what do inference for the whole world population is it not that's what we do in statistics then you have very approach to this the classical approach the frequency which is what everybody is used to now let me even ask a question here do we have anybody that been involved in Bayesian analysis okay okay that, that, that because 
I had him mention it cheat. So that's why I know he's somebody that is already is is in tune with the with the because if before you mention cheat, you you must have been doing something in that area. So then we also have the Bayesian. That one is subjective. Because why? It doesn't only deal with only the data that you have. It also take it also take care of the, the information you have before even observing your what data. Sorry to bother you with this history. That's how my supervisor used to do it. And I always like to follow Apata. He's a Professor Bakari friend. So you know, by Asia thinking, it was developed by Reverend Thomas B. I think it was developed by Reverend Thomas. He's a, that man was a pastor. So, you know, somebody, some people believe that when somebody is a pastor, he doesn't know anything, but I feel like something nowadays. That work is more, is, in fact, that work might even be more laborious than mathematics, if you really want to do it well. So, this is Reverend Thomas. He was the one, the pioneer, of Bayesian analysis, and it dominated statistical thinking throughout the 19th century. For classical philosophy, that one came through to, uh, uh, during the 20th century and became so dominant. But the good thing is, and the reason why Bayesian didn't thrive so much during time is because of the computational disadvantage. But because when when Bayesian was revived in the late 20th century due to computational advances. Because now, something that you maybe um, before, two, five MB something, memory, you, you have to carry it like, uh, you, have, you have to use a, maybe a trailer to carry it. Now, one gig uh, something. So, it really helped. So, let's look at this example. How you can do it in both Bayesian and and a frequent approach. Now, during a period of one year, out of 100 patients with myocardial infarction, visiting a hospital, 10 died following admission before discharge. That's the kind, it's like a kind of uh, proportion, is it not? So, the, over, the overall observed in hospital mortality rate in the population of MI, MI patients at all hospitals and for all patients is like 15 percent that's like your population something but the sample taken here is like is um, 10 percent is it not so we are interested in estimating the mortality risk in the hospital under study and also assess whether the given hospital differ from the average then if we use frequencies approach, don't let me go to this. I think this this both everybody okay. Okay, let me see. Yeah. In a classical inference, the withdraw in inference is drawn about unknown parameters through confidence interval and hypothesis testing. That is you can calculate the confidence interval, which is always 95% people use always 95% confidence interval and you can decide whether that 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 something is um, is um, you, you can use your p value to know whether it's significant or not significant or the biotian approach take different we will see as we go so just like i've mentioned this that you take a sample from the population and then Assume we are we are able to have a possible sample from you no know, this talking about um, that's the principle um, the frequency is based upon that is taking a repeated what sample. sample that's what it is based upon then the distribution of sample proportion is called sampling distribution of proportion and it's approaching normal portion so solving this problem we have you know sampling distribution of proportion, you can approximate it with what? Normal distribution, if the sample size is what? It's what? If the sample size is large. These are the, the normal statistics in the, in the other graphics. So, 
So, and the standard error. This is the formula for standard error. One minus p multiplied by p then over the n total number. Then, so we can approximate the ninety-five percent of the difference. We know that it will lie between pi, which is our what proportion? Is it not? It will lie between pi minus one, one point nine six standard. Then and pi, pi both that is both that is both both a the positive in this hypothesis that we have set that is pi is equal to 0 0.5 15 which is what the the population mean the population proportion is say then we now took some sample from a particular hospital we want to test whether it's different from the entire hospital so and we did that sampling distribution of uh, the different difference is referred to as the sample me sample proportion minus what the population proportion. The population proportion we have here is what? 0.15. The sample proportion is what? 10. So, then over the standard error, which is P multiplied by 1 minus P, then over the hand. So, we, we got this to be 1.67. 1.67. And if you go to the table of the normal distribution, check this with the corresponding critical value. We got that to be 0.16, which is greater than 0.05. That's the critical value set. This is, and once your what? Once your calculated value, this is the calculate the, the value, the p-value corresponding to the calculator is 0.16 is greater than the tabulated 0 0.05 that's the critical value what do you do you accept the word the null hypothesis that's what we're doing in uh, classical statistics but we are not so much concerned about where we are going to is the bayesian statistical inference bayesian method draw inference about unobservable parameter the un unobservable parameter in this case is what our what Proportion. Unobservable parameter. That's the proportion. It draw inference about unobservable parameter, for instance, the monetary risk or hypothesis by combining two sources of information. That is, these two sources of information, our prior belief about the parameter. And that can be derived from maybe past evidence. Maybe somebody has done a particular work somewhere and it got mortality to be a certain part. It can be from, you can also get it from pilot study. Can get it from pilot study, then from similar study carried out elsewhere, or subjective judgment. You can just, oh, it's likely to be this. And we will see this as we go into the course. Then, it also depends on the sample data. That is the data. You just generated that is, you you went to feed and get some data so it is based on these two your prior distribution and the what and the what the data, data that you have these two sources of information are combined via Bayes theorem and this is Bayes the Bayes estimate the Bayesian approach Estimate the probability of a potential conditional on the observed data that is the posterior probability. That is, when you combine the, the, the prior distribution, combine it with your data, that data they always specify it as likelihood. That is, distribution that your data follow. If you look at the, the timetable that we said, you said, you will realize we said linear. Is it not? When you have when you have when you have your, your outcome that is linearly distributed, we are still going to talk about it later. When you are you know, that is your likelihood. The data you have, you will give it what? A distribution. That's what we do in Bayesia. Then you combine it with the prior distribution. That will give you your procedure. 
stop. It, these are these are these are these are we write it in Bayesian. That is probability of the sorry. if you look at it, H is standing for hypothesis. Probability of a hypothesis given data. Probability of your what? A hypothesis that you want to test given the data. It's the same thing as the probability of data given the hypothesis multiplied by the what? The probability of the what? The prior probability of your what? Hypothesis. Of your hypothesis. Then, probability of the data. This is like a normalizing constant. The probability of the data. So that the 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 so that so that you know the um, probability is always ranging between zero and what one. one. That is the reason why the probability of data is there to normalize. It's a normalizing constant. So so just like I've mentioned, probability of data given your hypothesis that is the that is your what the likelihood what function. That is the likelihood function, which is probability of observing the data given the hypothesis or parameter. That is what is generating the data that what? Half. Likelihood. That is what is generating what? The data that you have. And that is why we always simulate. When you say, once you just give, if you want to simulate your normal distribution, you can just give the parameter, is it not? You just give the parameter the mean, then you give the variance, it will give you some random number, is it not? So that's, that is the likelihood. That is what is generating the data you have. Probability of data giving your what? Hypothesis or giving your what? Parameter, depending on which one you are testing. Then the probability of age. This is this time from prior probability. That is the information you have before what? Observing your data. Then probability of data. This is it. okay. This normal that makes the total posterior probability equal to one. This is uh, it's almost the same thing with what I just described, but now in terms of what? Parameter. In terms of parameter. Bayesian inference about any parameter is quantified by probability. It's not fixed. So it's a random what? It's a random what? Random, it's a random parameter. It's not fixed, unlike the frequencies where it is fixed. It's not just so. The graph data are fixed. So prior distribution. Bayesian analysis is built on such a belief as subjective probability, wherein we quantify whatever feeling, however vague, we may have about the parameter theta before we look at the data. That's a great difference between Bayesian and frequencies. Because you can model your what? The prior. You can combine your prior with what? With, the, with your data to get posterior probability. So then we determine the appropriate, determine the appropriate prior for is a bit difficult task. That's the, in fact, that's the most serious part of Bayesian analysis, determining your prior. Basically, basically this distribution, are, this distribution are specified based on information accumulated from past studies or from the opinion of subject area expert from past study. So most of a simpler alternative is to use a prior distribution with little information content. Here the data from the current study will dominate it will be the dominating force in the termination of posterior distribution. That is the data will speak more when you pick a work. A, 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 in fact some people call in fact I don't like using that now informative. I, I prefer to use weak prior because it's still giving little information no matter no matter no matter how small. So it's still giving little information. So it's weak you you, you can use when uh, weak prior instead of calling it non informative but for for the sake of uh, some people still call it non informative. So there are prior they are called conjugate priors. Conjugate priors, a conjugate prior is the kind of prior distribution that leads to posterior distribution belonging to the same distribution family as the prior. 
And the, the, the advantage of this is that it has computational confidence where you can locate a conjugate prior for a particular for, for, for your for your for, for your for your likelihood. If you are able to locate, so it will give something the, the posterior distribution that is like the distribution of the prior that you started with. So we can let let let's let's see this from an example point of view. Suppose X is the number of pregnant women arriving at a particular hospital to deliver baby during given month. So look at it, the number. What kind of data is this? Discrete. Discrete. That's a kind of data. So when you have this kind of data, what we do in Bayesian is that you specify distribution for that data. And uh, can data will follow Poisson distribution. Great. Follow so Poisson distribution. And now you want to look for a conjugate prior. So that by the time you combine the two, it will lead to posterior distribution that is also what? Now, so we, if we adopt Poisson distribution, that's the distribution of Poisson, probability of H given our parameter theta. So, and theta must be what? Non negative. Let me talk more like uh, I, I've, I've left mathematics, uh, I've left it for some time. But I still, the, the, if, 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 if there still need to be, I can easily pick it up and see come up. So that that's the good thing. That's the good thing to start with mathematics. Mm. So, so it it should be non-negative because Kant cannot be what negative. You know, well, I, I remember when we have been taught uh, mathematics during my undergraduate. I never see anything good in that department. <laughs> 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 you you know why? Because I I intended doing something. Something practical. What I really want to, to study was uh, engineering, mechanical engineering specifically. So anytime we are in, um, sorry for this digression, anytime we are in real analysis class, I will be one. This doesn't make any sense. But later I realized those things really make sense. They make a lot of sense. So, so, so we can, to refer by analysis, we need the prior distribution for theta, which has support on the re, on the positive real line. So, and so, in that case, we can find in that choice in gamma distribution. So, gamma distribution will give you a non-negative one. So, gamma we can use gamma distribution for that, and this the 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 probability density function for for what. For gamma distribution, so then with the gamma distribution also have this the main alpha multiplied by beta, then the, and this alpha and beta they are the what they call them what the any statistician here the scale and what shape parameter that's what they call them shape and scale parameter. So so we will try to we want to combine the two. This is an error. That P is supposed to be, I'm just saying it. Just, that P is just one. Probability of a theta given the theta. So that's our, that's our procedural probability. We said it's approximated by, by the, 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 the likelihood. Probability of X given the parameter. Then multiply with the, uh, the, the prior what? Probability. Then we know that our the 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 we the that is Poisson distribution, is it not? What we give the other time. If you look at it, I've removed the the thing that doesn't have any bearing with what really what we are doing. The 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 denominator, it just on hex. It doesn't. It is not related with theta. So I can take that constant away and deal with something that has bearing with what? With theta. So, so from that, 
Or if we do little arithmetic here, we, this is this is what we get. We get theta uh, raised to power x plus uh, alpha minus one, and also uh, that exponential. So if you look at it very well, it looks like what we started. Is it not? Yes. Any question here? Yes. Sorry, sir. You're talking about the posterior. The posterior. Is it yes. What you get from the result of your current analysis. Yes. Okay. The, that's the posterior. Yes. That is what you get from analysis of what you have done. But prior is what information you have before even taking that data. That's prior. That's the prior probability. So if you look at it, we got something like what we are starting from. That's why it is called conjugate what? Prior. Conjugate prior. So and in this play, it will be, if you look at it, the, the, the alpha prime is the same thing as x plus what? Alpha. Why the beta prime is this? One plus uh, the reciprocal of that. I hope it makes sense. So that is conjugate, and that's why when you have a, when you have a Poisson distribution, people are, they either use a uniform prior, gamma, they, they also use gamma distribution, uniform distribution or gamma distribution, because this one will make you to stay on the positive word, positive support for your for your parameter. Then there's also this one they call non-informative or weekly weak prior distribution. Non-informative prior are those which the contribution of data is posterior dominant for the quantity of interest. The data, non-informative, is the data that speak more than the prior distribution. When you use non-informative prior. No informative prior, those which for which the contribution of data is posterior dominant for the quantity of interest. No informative prior distribution are those prior, we are we are zone which do not make strong preferences over the value of the variable. It's still the same thing. That is, it's the data that speak more when you use a non-informative prior. These are sometimes known as fake reference or reference prior distribution. They also call it V. They call it uh, reference prior di distribution. These tend to be, yes. I just want to clarify something around uh, the choice of uh, conjugate prior again. So I want to be sure I'm getting the direction. Yes. Yes, okay. yes. We are saying that it is the likelihood that determines the prior. Is that what we are saying? No, that we are not saying the likelihood determines the like, prior. Like no. what we no. use the That prior. is, we are trying to to get something that will give you the distribution of the prior that is similar to prior distribution you choose. That is when you combine both the likelihood and the prior distribution. Something that will eventually give you a posterior distribution that is that is as similarity to your to your prior. So, so I was wondering what determining the like you that we just used now what we use in our example okay you know we say we we are dealing with current data yes. when you're dealing with current data it's better model poison. using Poisson distribution poison. because it will not be normal we, we will see this when we are when we are doing the the practice it will be if now in fact this is the best way to see when you when if you are if you are if you find the mean this are, this are, when you find the mean of your when you are doing exploratory analysis you find the mean especially of your outcome you realize that the the mean is far the the variance normally what person distribution is doing that the mean the variance they are equal. Mm -hmm. That's the assumption. 
Is it not? Yeah. So, and when you realize your 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 variance is far bigger than your mean, you know that you can't use the normal distribution that is. In fact, I used to make that mistake a lot from time back. I just pick my data and analyze with eternity. But when I have those information, I don't do that again. Those you first run those exploratory analysis and when you are far bigger than your mean. But in fact, so you know that you are dealing with a poor thing distribution. So but for our trial now we use we also use the what this we use the Poison too? No we use gamma. Gamma. Gamma distribution. If you check you can check one line, I see the the parameter of gamma gamma distribution. So Okay, but sir, I put want to understand now is that we talk about poison and we're talking about gamma. So is gamma now the conjugate prior that we're using? Yes. That's the conjugate prior. So when we combine for, for, for the for the person likely. Is it because we understand that when we combine uh poison and gamma, exactly. we arrive at gamma? Exactly. Because the parameter almost like you said, that's why. Yeah. So, yeah. We are not getting what we are explaining. So, I, I, sorry, I think uh, so for us to have a very smooth uh, presentation, let's delay the questions and reactions to the end of it. No, but I think it's, it's better this thing. No, no, no it's, 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 it's Let's do it like that. Okay. Uh, it's better yeah, yeah, this better. Yeah. Yeah. Be able to be like, uh, like, like, the reason why is that um, if this is more, this is not necessarily a presentation. Uh, so, it's like a teaching class. So, so that um, if you are not getting anything, you do not lose your path. We are all learning together. Mm. The one I don't know, I will tell you I don't know. And uh, we, we can always check it together and, uh, and, uh, and find the solution to it. So, so maybe we shall learn because um, you may still have to teach something later and then you cannot follow because you have not been following from the foundation. Yes, 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 yes. So you be, you are already lost from five minutes, like 20 hours ago. And then you are still there, nodding your head. So it's better to clear. Yeah. So you are saying that combination of uh, poison distribution and gamma. And gamma. It was the conjugal. Yes. Conjugal. If, uh, if uh, you check any test, they will tell you this. can often be made with from general understanding of the range and the behavior of failure. For example, failure parameter must have prior distribution on the positive real lines. You know, variance cannot be negative. Is it not? Yes, it must have what? On the real line. So, for, for like, like this example now, non-informative distribution in this range are often gamma. In fact, gamma or uniform work. So, let's see this example. If you specify this as gamma, 0 0.01 and 0, 0.0, what you are saying in this place is that you want a distribution that has what? Small mean. Because if I, the if you check the, the 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 mean of gamma distribution, I, have, I don't know. I don't have my is that Yes. Okay. So okay. I don't. I will have said we photocopy it.
the extraction of gamma distribution, that is the mean, let's say, is equal to alpha, that is your A over B. That's the expectation of gamma distribution, is it not? Yeah, so, yes, the mean. Now, for what this place is saying is that you want to have a small mean with very big failure for the for our, for our parameter. And if you look at this, the, the mean for this, for, okay, gamma, we say gamma is 0 0.01 and uh, 0 0.01, so, that is A and B, is it not? The A is 0 0.01, the B is also. So the mean for this one will be what? One. 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 Why the, the variance will be what? Okay. The variance, okay, let me. Okay, the variance is alpha over beta square, A over B square. The variance of theta will be equal to what? Alpha over beta square. That will be equal to what? One over what? Zero by zero, zero one. No, zero, zero one. Because the zero by zero one will have the, will have the first one. Yes, one over this. Yeah. this. So this will be a very large failure. But in fact, that sorry to say this. This uh, prior distribution is the most is the most subjective part of Bayesian analysis. In fact, since most people, they will, most time, people will just specify, you can use this prime. It's most subjective part of it. But we see try as much as possible and see what we can do. So, what are the conditions? Can we use non information prime? Because based on the yes, explanation, yes. The previous one, mm -hmm. the conjugal, is also non-positive. It's also non-positive. No, it, no, it, no, no, it's not always non-positive. Okay. Like now, if I, 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 if I do a model, okay. and I'm uh, trying to get my coefficient, beta, it doesn't need to be non-what? Non-negative. It can take any value. And, I, 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 and with that, I can use a normal what? Distribution for that. Because it can go this side. Go this side. I hope I answered that question. So I also want to say that will it be always good uh, if one can get the uh, conjugate prior? Will it be always good to look at, to consider the conjugate prior approach to so choosing the prior distribution? You do know the good thing is that what I've realized, in fact, I tried something well before leaving my room this morning. The good thing is that whether you use a weekly prior or conjugate prior, it will see arrive at the same conclusion. But the why people, why people always refer, in fact, weak prior is because it's a very easy way out. That's why people always quickly fix it in and, and use it. Because they are, they are very easy to, to quickly determine. That's why people always use uh, the weak prior. And like, um, if, you, if you can pick a uniform now, uniform distribution, that's that like the one, uniform distribution, then you get your A and B. It will still give you, whether informative or non informative, it will still give you the same, you will still arrive at the same something. Let's now look, go back to our previous example and try to do it via Bayesian approach. We said that our hand is what? 100. The sample ticket, is it not? Yes. Then the pi, sorry, the x is what? 10. Is it not? The now the okay. Then we realize that we can choose okay, this is um, good. This is um, since it is proportion, it's only what? A binomial what? Distribution. That's a likelihood. A 
binomial distribution. When you have proportion, you can take it as binomial distribution. And um, the density function for binomial distribution, that's it. N factorial over N minus X factorial, then multiplied by what? X factorial, then uh, the pi raised to power X, 1 minus pi raised to, one minus pi raised to power N minus X. That is, our likelihood function, probability of data, given our parameter. That is it. Is it not? That's our, that's our likelihood. Then, we can choose a way, the, 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 the fact, for this, um, um, uh, we, can, we, we can choose uniform distribution for our, for our prior. That is, you know, that, that in, in fact, look at it. It's the uniform distribution we are, we are choosing is also what? Non-negative. It can be less than zero. It's between, you know, your, your, your probability is always between. And the, the, the probability of that, probability of pi, if you look at uniform distribution, is always what? One over B minus C. Our B in this case is one, is it not? Then A is what? Zero. So, that, that, that will give us one probability. So prior probability, that is one. So we are only left with what? The likelihood. The, the, the likelihood. Now, suppose we choose a better distribution as our prior. The, the probability for, for prior distribution, that's the, that's it, the, Gamma of A into A plus B into Gamma of A over, over gamma, gamma B then Pi raised to power A minus 1 then 1 minus Pi raised to power B minus 1 and A should be greater than 0 B should be also what? That's the assumption for Gamma Prime Gamma distribution, yes, gamma distribution. Then we all know this very well so, and the mean of that distribution is also A over A plus B, then the variance is these two. Therefore, so for our posterior distribution, our posterior distribution will be what? The, 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 the likelihood, likelihood, then multiply with what? Prior multiply with the prior distribution. Then, which will, which will give us, if you manipulate this, Taking away the gamma, it will give us this pi raised to power x plus a minus one because then one minus which is also which show is a conjugate what better distribution is what a conjugate trial for binomial. Did we see that? Because it's going back to the kind of distribution we started with. Is it not? Okay. Are we following? Mm. It's coming back. It's the better distribution we started with. So, meaning if you have binomial distribution, better is if you have a binomial distribution, you can consider better mm -hmm. distribution as the conjugate price for that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would recommend if you can mm -hmm. if you can get this book, there's this book. Uh, let me try to look for it. It gives us some. Uh, the book is by. You can find some of those things. By Andrew Lawson. By Asia. People from Jerry can get. By, by Andrew Lawson. So you 
can find some of those conjugates in that in the book. Downloaded this yes. Okay, you downloaded it. Anyway. I think you should have it. Uh, okay, they, they, they have it. Okay, they have it. Okay, you downloaded it. Okay, you downloaded it. Okay, you Okay, you can find some of this file. Yeah. And um, if you look at it, now we are just trying to compare mm -hmm. the uniform distribution with zero and one is yeah. equivalent to beta. Because if you substitute um, if you substitute your one, your one in A, it will give you the same thing as this one. Then how do you summarize your posterior inference? The entire procedure distribution can be reported. It is the entire procedure distribution instead of summary. For that particular parameter can be reported. Then you can provide a numerical summary of mean, median, or mode. And also the, the variation, the standard deviation of one type. We can also report the interval of the posterior probability, which is called credible interval. You don't use confidence interval. Yeah, that, that, that's the beauty of it. And uh, you know, and this thing, the the software will calculate it for you if you are using open book. It will give the two the, the two point five percent percentile and ninety seven point five percent percentile. So you don't need to begin to struggle to calculate it. Once you run with your model, it will give you all this. Then, for instance, to make inference about pi in our previous example, this will be based on our posterior distribution. So, if we assume a beta distribution prior, then we come to this final posterior distribution. You know, we started with x is equal to what? 10, is it not? Yes, sir. X, if you look at it, beta x plus a. Our a is 1. Then we, the, the n we started with is 100. Minus x, 10. Then plus the b, 1. 91. If you, if you, then you can get your mean from this. Because we know the mean. A over A plus B, then the variance mm -hmm. D. But we can get this in, quickly get this in R. We just say, we just say Q beta. Then, so, in addition to point estimate, it is important to record the posterior uncertainty. That is the interval of the posterior <laughs> probability. That is, what, what, that is, for a 95% credible interval, we can simply take the 2.5 percentile and 97.5, the, the 90 uh, percent, okay, or quantile. So, 2.5 quantile or 97.5 quantile. We can therefore make a probability statement about the true parameter, for instance, for a 95 percent credible interval, A1, comma A2. We can say there is 95 percent probability that the true value of the parameter is between, between this interval. Need to be between this. The 95 percent credible interval for zero digital mortality risk is calculated by this. That is 2.5 and 97.5 you know, beta 11 and 91, which is this. If you, we can check this with R, what you just need to do is just say Q beta. And I, I even give it here in the, the last something. Just say Q beta, you give the, 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 the quantile 0 0.0025, then 11, that the, your he and B, 91, you can get that from here. So what we are saying here is that the, with, with, uh, we, are, we, we, we have 95% probability that the true 
mortality risk will lie between 5.6%. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Please, can we appreciate our...